Okay, so hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I've got a really exciting video for you all. I'm doing a Q&A. &A. So I haven't done one of these in a, a very, very, very long time. So I thought why not do one? I asked you all for questions and you sent them in anonymously, which is making me a little bit nervous. <laughs> but that's fine. Before we jump in, make sure you do hit that subscribe button because it would mean the world to me and give it a thumbs up. Share my channel if you feel like it, if you're feeling friendly. <laughs> and comment down below what you're having for dinner or what you've had for dinner. I don't know why, just a bit, bit of randomness, you know? We're just gonna jump straight in. Please ignore the state of my face. I am sweating off my makeup like mad. It is quite late now. So yeah, let's just ignore that. If there was one piece of advice that you could give anyone, what would it be? Hmm. Oh, that's a really hard question. Oh my god, I don't know. Maybe that don't ever, ever be upset by people judging you. It's easier said than done, but you need to get your head in the mindset that no matter what you do, how you do it, like literally whatever you do, you're never going to please everyone. There's going to always be people that judge. Do you know what I mean? Like if you do a certain thing, you're going to get people that don't like it and people that like it and then vice versa. And that's really helped me actually come into terms with that because I used to get really, really self-conscious and self-aware of everything, especially my personality, choices I made, blah, blah, blah. But honestly, everything you do is going to piss somebody off. So just do it <laughs> if it makes you happy and it's safe. That's probably my best bit of advice. Someone's put, do you have any learning difficulties? Um. No, unless you class ADHD as one, but that's more of a behavioural disorder, it's not a really a learning disability, it's never stunted my learning in any way, besides like concentration issues etc. But um, yeah, I was diagnosed at nine and I actually did a whole video about it, so if you type up like summer so ADHD it will come up. Um, it was actually really scary for me to do that video because I hid it from you all for years. And yeah, but no, I don't have, I'm aware of, any, like, actual learning disabilities. Someone's put any gossip from the To Be Tanned trip. So I went to the Ibiza in October with To Be Tanned. And no, to be fair, there's, I know this is probably not what you're, you're wanting to hear, but no, there actually isn't. Like, it was so lovely. It was so much, so much better than I expected. I was so scared. Like, I wouldn't get on with the girls. But when I'm thinking now, like, there's not one girl that I didn't get, like, didn't, Get, not get on with if that makes sense like everyone was so lovely the only gossip I can think of is that I actually got lost in Ocean Beach so that was great <laughs> basically I didn't I didn't mean to I lost everyone there <laughs> so embarrassing so yeah this gossip on myself because <laughs> basically I left the behind the DJ bit like the VIP booth and apparently I didn't know if you leave there you can't get back in once you've left it was, it was quite late, it was nearish closing anyway. No one would come to the toilet with me and I was literally going to wet myself so I just went on my own. Um, and then when I came back I tried to get back in the VIP bit, like because I had the TV town wristband. And they were like, no you can't come back in and I was like, okay then. So obviously because everyone was having fun enjoying themselves, no one was answering their phone. And um, yeah, I just didn't really know what to do so I left Ocean Beach and literally wandered around for ages. My phone then died. Guys, it literally was absolutely terrifying. It was, oh my God, like, wow. And then this lovely girl who I now really, really appreciate and love. She, she's called Daisy. She rescued me. <laughs> literally, because I couldn't even get a taxi back because I only have Apple Pay on my phone and my phone had died. So I genuinely was stranded, like seriously stranded. Do you see you and Toby last in? Would you like to start a family with him? Yes, I, I I know we'll last, like, we're both so mature in, and we know what we want and he's so different to just any other boy I've ever come across or been with, he's just so communicative, he's just so good at communicating and so honest, I'm really, really, I'm too honest and he's too honest but that honestly, <laughs> honest, is the best like thing in a relationship ever. And yeah, I trust, we trust each other with our life. So we will definitely start a family one day. Not yet. 
we I want to be about 28, 29 for my first kid, so 10 years, 10 years I reckon. Your opinion on age gaps in relationships. My boyfriend and I have an 11 year age gap. Right, so my opinion on this is that it genuinely completely depends on how old you are, like both of you are, if that makes sense. So an 11 year age gap, in my opinion, is totally fine if you're like 26 and 36. No, that's not 11 years. Okay, 27 and 38. It happens, you know, if you're 30 and 41. 40 and 51. That is absolutely fine. However, when you're say um, 16 and you're going out with a 27 year old, which is an 11 year age gap, that is well, just absolutely disgusting. Like, yes, you are the age of consent in the UK, but you're not an adult and he is clearly attracted to young girls. Like, if my si my sister's 16 and if I knew a 27 year old was attracted to her, that is just not normal. Like, it's just not normal. And for example, like, it's a really, really hard one because I, like, me and my ex were, 14 and 15 when we started dating he was literally just the year above me in school years but there was a point where I was 14 and he was 16 because he was born in the January and he was the year above and I was the year below in the August so I've always been the youngest in my year and he's like one of the oldest so there was a time where obviously he was of age consent I wasn't and it is so tricky because we were literally a school year apart it is so ridiculous but saying that I do think 16 and 14 maybe if you're from the year, a, a whole nother year below it's just weird I don't know it's it's a really it's a really sticky one what was your first time like um honestly like I wasn't scared I was always quite inquisitive so I just wanted to like do it and get it over with uh yeah it was honestly I probably have the most boring first time story ever genuinely it was with someone I was in a relationship with and I felt comfortable got the giggles a little bit not gonna lie <laughs> yeah it was all right I mean it was both our first times we weren't gonna be like really good but yeah it, it was all right was nothing really to call home about favorite disney film oh this is so hard oh my god so princess movie would have to be beauty and the beast and disney pixar toy story oh i don't know yeah toy story oh this is so hard i've got so many more no they're my top i think someone's just randomly put i hate molly may okay cool <laughs> what <laughs> What would my, what would your death row meal be? A, a roast dinner and like, hands down, a Toby Carvery roast dinner. All the trimmings. Favourite brand you've worked with? Um, I don't know. Oh my God, that's actually really hard. I feel like I haven't actually like in the scheme of things worked with that many brands. I don't know. Oh, that is, well, this is a great q and I don't, I don't know any of the blimmin' answers to any of the questions. Um. I don't want to give a specific brand, but I would say just any brand that doesn't control your content, like that is the biggest annoyance to me. There has been so many times where I've like got a product or like was going to pick a product and they just become too controlling of your content. Like, and I'm, I'm saying no, that like that doesn't fit to my channel vibe. It will do better how I want to do it because I know my audience. And they'll be like, no, no. And I'll just be like, okay, sorry, can't work with you. I'm so, I am actually quite picky, <laughs> which I feel like is good because it makes you guys trust me more. But yeah, I probably could be earning more money. <laughs> First kiss story. Oh, this is, this is um, a top tier. So embarrassing. Honestly, guys, I was 11. Yeah, I know that's quite young. I was in year seven and it was with my boyfriend at the time who I'd literally grown up with. We went to nursery, not nursery, we went to, um, yeah, we, did we go to nursery together? No. Have I lost the plot? We went to primary school together, and now we were in secondary school together. Anyway, we were at the park with loads of people, and I was proper getting peer pressured into it. Like, I, I, I wanted to kiss him. 
Like, I didn't mind, but I didn't want everyone watching, and oh my god, it was so embarrassing. Do people remember when everyone used to film everyone's kissing? Like, like, like your friend would be like, <laughs> so embarrassing. Yeah, anyway, so I remember we were in the bushes. There was literally about 10 of our mates there filming us and we kissed and it was so so bad i was 11 i didn't know how to bloody kiss i didn't know what to do with my tongue did i it was so mortifying that one of the um so-called at the time popular boys when we went to the park after showed me videos on how to kiss like i was mortified i was literally mortified I don't even remember what I said. I think I was probably just like, oh, I don't like doing it in front of people. <laughs> I'm a pro. Like, of course I didn't know what to do. <laughs> Kids are weird, aren't they? Like, I feel like, genuinely, a, half of the people in my school in year seven were like, well, a, well ahead of their years. Well ahead of their years. I mean, actually, genuinely, half of those have kids now, which is crazy to me because I'm a baby still. I feel like a baby. I'm 19. When do you want to move out? Um... I would say, so I'm 19, I don't want to move out until I can get a mortgage. I have the luxury of being able to live at home and being happy living at home and I want to save up as much money as I can obviously first to be able to get a nice house and I don't want to spend that money on rent when I don't have to. I don't think there's anything wrong with renting if you want to or if you don't like living at home or if you don't have the access to then rent by all means however as for someone like me and also toby we can both live at home for a little bit longer save more money have a nicer house and have more money put towards the house if that makes sense so i would say about like maybe like when i'm 23 24 i'll buy a house no 23 mm, 22 no i don't know probably in about three four years i reckon tips on starting youtube and growing it um <laughs> I wouldn't bother now. <laughs> that sounds really, really harsh, but I genuinely wouldn't bother. Like, YouTube channels are dying as it is, like, even the ones that used to do well. So I feel like in this time period, it's going to be almost near impossible to even get big on YouTube, if that makes sense. But I, if you want to start it, do it. If it's genuinely a hobby for you, I would just start it. I literally started mine with no intention of getting anywhere with it. I was like 12, 13. Filmed on my iPhone 5S, edited on iMovie on my phone. So honestly, you don't need anything to do it or get started. You just need to make an account and post a video. And maybe try and have like something different that other people don't have, whether that be your content, like what you're doing in your videos, or have your, you know, whether your personality is your, your niche, like mine. No, I'm joking, that was a joke, guys, I promise. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I would say genuinely probably just to change to TikTok, if I'm honest. My, my saying is, you know in Nativity, when they go, when that golden guy <laughs> says to Mr. Maddens, if you can't act, teach, and if you can't teach, teach primary who remembers that nativity my saying is if you can't get big on youtube try tiktok that's my thing because i know so like not personally but well um there's a lot of tiktokers that had tried to get bigger on youtube but you obviously do need more personality for youtube i'm just saying you do tiktok you can have more of a short shorter video so you don't need as much personality to keep people reeled in for like a long period of time and that's why a lot of people that attempted youtube for years and didn't get anywhere with it have blown up on tiktok if that makes sense and there's nothing wrong with that i can't get big on tiktok because i am a blabber mouth and i can't come up with short quick catchy videos i need to talk and talk and talk so yeah but i would try tiktok if i were you because that's the way the world's going now which famous people have people said you look like um I actually used to get Megan Fox a lot when I had brown hair because I've got like the same sa sa shame, oh my god, same shape head, like forehead, blue eyes, and I used to have really dark, straight hair. That's the only person I've really been told I look like. Since I've been blonde, I don't think I've been told I look like anyone. I, apparently I look like Tasha from Love Island, which I cannot see at all. Like genuinely, I think it's just, like we have none of the same features, just blue eyes and blonde hair. 
which is half the population now but yeah anyway that is the end of today's video i really really hope you enjoyed it and i loved catching up with you all it was a very very fun and yeah make sure you like comment and subscribe make sure you comment down below what you're having for dinner or what you've had for dinner don't know why it's just a bit random and yeah i love you all so so much see you very soon bye